Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful. To all of our viewers out there, we begin by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're glad that you're joining us again one more time at the intersection of faith and reason, where our guest is Dr. Ja'far Sheikh Idris. Dr. Ja'far, it's good to be with you again. Last, last time, we were talking about um, the need, not the need, but the, the possibility that arguing for the existence of God rationally yeah. is easy, even though it's very ironic that yeah. it's the believers that have to argue for this. And you mentioned that that should not be the case, and I believe that we will be addressing this later on. And then you also spoke about some of the ideas of Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah. a great Islamic thinker and philosopher in this, uh, in this regard. And you were talking about the kind of people that might potentially deny the existence of God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I believe that we were given three options by yeah. Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah. his very first honest and blunt opinion about them, <laughs> yeah. that they were liars. Yeah. Some of them. And yes, and the second were uh, suffering from sophistry. Yes. That's a new word that I learned last time. <laughs> I make sure to use it every time from now on. And then there was the third kind of people that were very interesting. Yeah. And these are people that were just not aware. Aware of, yeah. Of, um, yes, um, and, and we're enumerating the questions that he raised uh, regarding uh, the fact that uh, this knowledge of the Creator is innate. In the humans. first question was about what kind of knowledge is that? The second question was about why, if that is the case, people uh, deny. deny it. The third question is, if this is something that is in the human nature, then what is the use of arguments, he said. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, and you don't uh, try to convince someone of something which um, he's, uh, he already believes in. And uh, his, uh, his, his, uh, his reply is that this strengthens the faith, even of those who uh, believe. And we can, we can elaborate on this and remind ourselves of the fact that faith is not something that you have once and for all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is something that a person can lose. Mm -hmm. It is something that uh, can be strengthened or, or weakened. Mm -hmm. And he says that it's a fact that if you know something, then the more uh, you have evidence for it, the stronger your faith in it will be. Sure. So, sure. so, so he says that the, uh, the, the arguments and the evidence strengthen the faith of those. those who are already believers. Yeah. And I would add uh, something else, that it shows also the irrationality of, or untenability of, uh, of the position of the atheist. Hmm. And I, I, I don't condemn the atheist only, but I will tell him that you are being irrational. There is evidence for the existence of, of the Creator and you are denying it. And all your arguments for the non-existence of the Creator uh, are invalid arguments. So, and uh, Ibn Taymiyyah says uh, somewhere else uh, that this is something uh, that, is, that is a duty on Muslims to do. Hmm. Uh, that you must make the non-believer feel that he is defeated. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, you will not be uh, 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 giving your religion its due. Of and course, not everyone can do that. Sure, and, and obviously I think he's talking about intellectually defeated. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. He's talking about uh, intellectual defeat. Yeah, that's interesting that somebody from back then, at Ibn Taymiyyah's time, mm -hmm. is actually promoting and encouraging such a thing. And it seems like all believers, and I'm saying that all believers meaning that of all different faith um, groups, is that we really feel very apologetic nowadays. Yes, but this is because, he would say, I think, because their knowledge of, of, of religion is meager and because their faith itself is weaker. So the, the, more, yeah, the stronger the, the faith, as we said last time, the stronger your faith is, the more rational you become. The stronger the faith, and the more knowledgeable you are, uh, the more uh, rational uh, you become. 
And he says that he benefited greatly. And I can uh, testify to this from my own experience. He says that he benefited greatly uh, from uh, knowing the position of the, of the non-believers uh, non and the deviant uh, people. Mm. And he made a general uh, rule that, that you, the more you know about um, the falsehood of uh, anything that contradicts uh, religion, the stronger your faith will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and, and, and I can say this also from my uh, experience. Sometimes, uh, yeah, and I purposely read a book on atheism <laughs> also. <laughs> also. Of course, I don't encourage everyone to do that, uh, especially if they are young or so. But I benefit, uh, I, and I benefit uh, greatly from this. Inshallah, we'll give some uh, examples of, 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 of this. Uh, uh, now, he says that uh, the fundamental thing is what we have said. And this is the reason, in fact, why people believe. Hmm. They don't believe because of the arguments that we are going to mention <laughs> now. Because some people are not even aware of these arguments. They do not even understand them sometimes. And uh, sometimes the arguments can be put in, in, in a wrong form. Hmm. Uh, some, uh, some essays in the West uh, criticized, I think one of them was uh, Kant. They criticized argument for the existence of God. No, it's not Kant, no, because Kant was a believer. Uh, they criti I, I, Marx, Marx, they um, criticized argument for the existence of God uh, they thought that um, they proved them to be false. Therefore, there is no God. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a very famous British uh, philosopher uh, said, no, this doesn't follow. He was not a believer himself, but he was speaking just logically. He said that the arguments can be false, but still God exists. Sure. You know, because you can give a false argument for the existence of something which in fact exists, but not for the arguments or the <laughs> evidence that, uh, that, uh, that you mentioned. So we want to emphasize this fact. We are not saying this. Uh, we are not claiming that any person who doesn't understand these kinds of arguments in the elaborate way uh, which uh, we might uh, yeah, resort to uh, is not a believer. The belief is based primarily on that, <laughs> on, on, on that innate uh, nature in, in, that is in, yeah, that in, is in, in humanity. No. You know, that's a good point that you're mm. making there. Mm. And that is the defeat of an argument mm. does not necessarily mean that it is the defeat of what that argument stands for. No. Uh, 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 yes, f uh, of the conclusion. Of the conclusion yes, of that, uh, of that yes, argument. Yes, because a person can make uh, wrong premises and arrives at a true conclusion. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, so the fact that um, his argument is false doesn't mean that the conclusion is, 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 is false. Right. I got you. Uh, okay. Now, he says that, uh, yani, uh, he says that some people, and I, I know this also from my study of Western philosophy, uh, people confine evidence for the existence of the Creator uh, to certain arguments. They call them uh, arguments for the existence of the Creator, and they teach them to the, the students and so on. And he says that this is wrong. Hmm. Uh, he says that there are innumerable arguments. Uh, ev there is innumerable kinds of evidence, hmm. not arguments in the logical sense, uh, evidence for the existence of the Creator. Uh, and he said because this is something that is very important for people, so uh, the God who created them helps them by, by giving them so many uh, pieces, pieces of evidence. for sure. them. And he mentions among these, uh, first, of course, uh, human nature, then uh, what he calls uh, uh, the ayahs. He said that uh, the argument of the ayah, I will elaborate on this. Uh, the, uh, you, you know that this is mentioned in the Quran several sure. times. Uh, 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 an ayah is a sign and is an evidence. Uh, 
An ayah uh, is, is an Arabic word. An ayah is an Arabic word, sign, which means, means sign. 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 Mm -hmm. And then there is what is called the cosmological argument. Mm -hmm. This is very well known to people in the West. And then uh, there is uh, what is called the argument from design, mm -hmm. that, uh, that the world is made in such a way uh, th that uh, yeah, it must have a designer. Yeah, yeah, it is designed. It is not just uh, God. Yeah, uh, 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 the world is not made of just isolated, created things. There is a design. Mm -hmm. Then there is, he says, argument uh, from the words of the Creator. Mm -hmm. You read uh, the Quran or you read uh, the Torah, the original Torah, or you read the Gospel that was revealed to Jesus. And by reading the words of, of the Creator, you come to believe in the Creator, even if you were not a, a believer, believer before. Mm -hmm. um, he, gives, he, he says also the lives of the prophets. Uh, so someone might not be, um, uh, might be an atheist, but then he meets a prophet, he sees, uh, he becomes very impressed by uh, his life, he becomes a Muslim, and so on. So he says that there are many uh, kinds of arguments. For but, the, the people who limited these arguments, I, I am thinking that they did not say these are all the arguments that are out there, yeah. mm. but what they're saying is that I think they would be in reaction to the arguments that were raised by the People who deny the existence of God, that's how they were. They don't mm. say, they don't say, I mean, uh, they, they don't express this. Um, but the, the implicit assumption is that these are the arguments. These are the only uh, arguments the that only are out arguments. there. And therefore, if we prove them to be false, then... We are done. Uh, yes, then there is no uh, creator. But as you said, we tend to be a bit meager and maybe at times a bit shallow and trivial in the process when we are counter-arguing these, uh, these points. So, some of, yes, some of them. Uh, uh, but you, you remember, some of these uh, atheists, some of them were great thinkers. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect any ordinary Muslim to have an argument uh, against them. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, their arguments will shake his belief, but he is not... Uh, he doesn't have, have the, the knowledge also to counter their, their arguments. So I, I'm not saying that every Muslim sure. should be, uh, sure. should be so, but uh, this is a kind of jihad as uh, uh, this jihad become, <laughs> has become a dangerous <laughs> word these days. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is a peaceful jihad, so <laughs> there is no problem. Sheikh, when we come back, yeah. I would like to ask if that has actually promoted atheism the lack of, of, of answers to the arguments that are, that are made. Did that promote atheism in any way, shape, or manner? And please do stay tuned, and we will be back with Dr. Jeikh Jafar uh, again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and welcome back again to the intersection of faith and reason. If you're just joining us, our guest is Dr. Jafar Sheikh Idris, and we are generally speaking about the relationship between faith and reason and particularly at this point, we're talking about the evidence for the, the rational evidence for the existence of God. And Sheikh, I believe you mentioned them in summary. Yes. And um, I believe we're going to um, talk about each one of yes. them at this point. The, we, we said the first evidence is the innate knowledge. We yeah. did say that, but I'm sorry, I think I did ask, yeah. does the lack of response from the community of the believers to the arguments of, those who deny the existence of God did die. In fact, in fact um, yeah, I need to be fair to, 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 to the religious theologians, even in the West, they do. They do write books against, uh, against uh, atheists. Uh, whether the atheists are convinced or not is something yeah, they are not to be blamed for. In fact, one of the staunchest uh, um, atheists uh, declared that um, he now became uh, a, a, believer. a believer. Yes, he's called uh, Professor Flu, hmm. and, and he used to uh, criticize these arguments for the existence of God and so on. Uh, but there will always be uh, people like this, as uh, uh, if they are suffering from sophistry <laughs> or they are not aware but, or they are liars. So, so what can you do? But at least the but arguments we, are there. Uh, what? 
But yes, at least well, yes. This is what we should make them feel that they are wrong, sure. whether they admit it or not. Or at least on the defensive, no. rather than the believers yes. are yes. on the defensive yes. at this point. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, now uh, the the uh, the second evidence is a very important one, is that the evidence of what the Quran and the Sunnah call ayahs, mm -hmm. ayahs, mm -hmm. and ayah, as we said, is a sign. Mm -hmm. uh, he said something uh, interesting. He says this is Ibn Taymiyyah. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that uh, a sign is not an argument. Mm -hmm. It is something that points to something else. Mm -hmm. For example, I know you, I know your voice. Mm -hmm. So if I hear your voice, I say, As, yes, it must be around. So your voice Was an is, ayah. is an eye, is a sign for your existence. Sure. So it is not an argument. It is not an argument. It points. And he says that the advantage of the ayah over the arguments as uh, that we will inshallah elaborate on is that the ayah points to God directly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but while the the argument gives you a general conclusion that there must be a creator or uh, an eternal thing but the ayah yeah, and as if, if you can say, makes a link between you and your, your, your creator. That's a, that's a very, very interesting now, point that he makes. Now, but then he raises the question. Someone might say, or I don't know, perhaps I raise the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone might say, but this is not an evidence. This means that I already know God. Hmm? And I know uh, this is his creation. And... Yeah, and to see something as a sign of something else, you must know both. Sure. And you must see the link between, uh, between the two. So the question would be, then what is the use? Yes, I think he raised this question. Well, then what is the use? I already know God. I'm not sure which is impressive more. Yeah. The fact that he makes the argument or the questions that he asks for his he's own a, argument. Because he's an, yeah, a great uh, intellect. Uh, to, yeah, he's not afraid of... Uh, of raising um, questions. About his own arguments. Yes, yes. So he said, uh, there, there, uh, there is a good uh, reason for this. The first, as we said about the, the, uh, the, the evidence generally, he said that this is strengthens your faith. The more you see of God's signs, uh, the stronger your faith in him will be. Sure. And the more you know about him, because uh, uh, the the uh, sp uh, you know in the Quran uh, there are many verses about uh, that uh, invite us to think about the heaven and the earth and so on. And uh, he said that this tells you about the attributes of your Creator. Sure. So 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 there is, uh, yeah, there is, there is a, a, a reason for this. And he's he's saying yeah. that. I, I, I don't want to jump into conclusions, yeah, yeah. but it sounds as if he's saying that the ayahs do serve more of a purpose to the one who already believes. Yeah, of course. Yes. Rather but than then, the one who does now, not. What about someone who doesn't believe? He says that you help him to see the link between the two. Uh -huh. mm. mm -hmm. the, there must... The, the, if he... If he uh, thinks deeply about the nature of the creation, and he already, uh, even if he doesn't believe in, in God, he must have an idea of God. As, sure. as some people said, you can't deny something of which you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so even an atheist must have an idea of what he is uh, de denying. Uh, what, what, what he is denying. Now, if he has that idea, and then you tell him about the nature of, of the creation to help him to see the connection between the creation and... What he's denying, what which is, is he's God. What he's denying, and, and then he, he will accept it. Uh, because many, many of the atheists say that we don't see them as ayahs, we, don't, we see them as just brute facts. Eh? This is a tree that is uh, the sea, the, 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 these are clouds, uh, uh, and so on. 
He says that the argument helps the person to see the link between the two. And the best argument that yeah, does this is an argument in the uh, Quran, which I will, uh, uh, with your permission, el elaborate on. Please. The, uh, the Quran says, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay, were they created out of nothing? Am khuliqu min ghayri shay, am humul khaliqun, or were they the creators of themselves? Hmm. This means that the Quran is not assuming the non-existence of the creator as some of the arguments do. Mm -hmm. It is assuming that there is a creator and it tells the person who denies the existence of the creator, then what is the alternative? If there is no creator, then how did you come to be? And that will be the first part of the verse. Am khuliqu min ghayri shay. Yes. <clears throat> Where, where, where did you come from? Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever the Quran asks a rhetorical question, this means that the answer is well known to a rational person. Mm -hmm. um, and did you come from nothing? Any yeah, and rational person with a little reflection would say, say no. well, nothing comes from nothing. Mm -hmm. no. Are you the creators of yourself again? With a little reflection, one can see that a thing doesn't create itself. Sure. Because to create, it must be there. Hmm? Sure. But if it is there, it is, not, it is already created. Sure. So to say that something creates itself is a contradiction in terms. Sure. You assume the thing to exist, and you assume it not to exist at the same time. And, 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 and any uh, rational person whether a layman or, or, or intel, يعني, uh, someone with يعني, big intellect, I can see uh, that this cannot be, uh, be the case. So this is the Quranic argument for uh, against atheism. This is one uh, of the arguments, and it is a very famous one. Uh, many of our theologians elaborated, uh, elaborated on it, and it is better than uh, the arguments that we will uh, mention uh, uh, in on. about what is called the uh, cosmology. Sheikh, as, and as I, uh, <coughs> but, yes. Please, I'm sorry. But, but there is no third alternative mentioned in the verse. Because there is no third alternative. The third alternative is that it must be created by, by that is assumed. And that is left unsaid. Yeah, but it's assumed. It, it is, uh, this is what you said at first. You said that we, يعني, we should not be on the defensive. Gotcha. Now here the Quran is not on the defensive. It says there is a creator. If you deny the creator, then show me. You either created yourself. Uh, which is or, impossible. Or you came from nothing. Which is impossible. And we won't even mention the third alternative because you, uh, yes, it is well known. It is well known. Nice. So, nice. so this is the, the Quran. يعني, for, for some time, I, I thought that uh, this was like the cosmological argument that starts uh, uh, by, by assuming that um, there is no creator and then proving the existence of the creator. But then I, I discovered that I was mistaken. In fact, the, 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 the assumption is that there is a creator. Let's prove and, otherwise. Uh, uh, yes. <coughs> so nice. th the onus of proof is, uh, proof is on you who... who who deny the existence of the, uh, of the Creator. And that's what the Qur'an is yeah. promoting at this point. And I tell you something interesting. Inshallah, I will give some evidence for this, uh, if we continue this discussion. I looked into the arguments of the atheists, contemporary arguments, mm. and I found that most of them had to resort to one of these two. One of these two alternatives? No. Nah or both of them sometimes. Even some yeah, the great scientists had to say, because they insisted on atheism, had to say that things come from nothing, or had to say that they create themselves. There was a third uh, alternative for the atheists, but now it is no longer there. They used to say that the world is eternal, Hmm. So it doesn't need to be created. Hmm. Now, after uh, the Big Bang theory, 
It is only a theory, but but anyway, it closed that uh, alternative uh, there. Yes, because the, according to the Big Bang theory, everything had a beginning: time, space, matter, and so on. So, no one can say that uh, the world is eternal. And even before the Big Bang theory, it was wrong to say this because you cannot point to anything in this world and say that it is eternal. The Greeks used to think that the heavenly bodies are eternal hmm. because they said that they never saw the, the, any, any change in the, in, in the sun or the moon, or so, so, so they must be uh, eternal. And Al-Ghazali replied to, to them, he said, how do you know? These are huge bodies. This is what Ghazali said, mm. and uh, they are very far away from us. So if they diminish, you will not see the, 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 the amount of, of diminishing of diminished part of them. Of. But now we know that the sun is continuously uh, <laughs> diminishing now, and, and the same applies to the moon. So no one can up now uh, point to something and say that this is eternal, because everything that exists that you point to Must have had can, can, can be changed. And if it can be changed, then it can not be eternal. And with this, we would come to the end of this episode, hoping that you would join us next time with our dear guest here, Dr. Jafar Sheikh Idris. Until that, we say so long. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.